Jack Debora take it on Jose Gallegos. That is our next matchup, but with more on Jack Debora, we'll send it to Jordan Hardy. Thank you, Ray. So yesterday in the fighter meeting, Sephora, you know, he was telling us he's a southpaw, but he's letting us know he really idolizes Manny Pacquiao. And I asked him, so are you naturally left-handed or are you right-handed? And sure enough, he's naturally a right-hander, but he fights southpaw because he admires Manny Pacquiao so much that he converted to a southpaw. So he says that's actually why he has a really good right hand and a solid jab. So let's keep an eye out for that tonight, and maybe we'll see a right hook for the knockout. Right? Thank you very much, Jordan. Let's take a look at our tail of the tape for this featherweight contest. As you see, both same age, height and reach, rather similar to Porum, looking to remain undefeated as he makes his United States debut here in California. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Saboba Resort and Casino here in San Jacinto, California. The action continues as we now have 10 rounds. This in the featherweight division brought to you by MGM Resorts and Brooklyn Boxing in association with MP Promotions. Your three judges scoring this contest will be Sherry Cantu, Jose Cobian, and Patrick Russell. And your referee in charge when the bell sounds is Edward Hernandez Jr. Introducing first fighting out of the red corner. He comes in wearing the black and gold, weighing in officially at 128 pounds. His record, 16 wins, a dozen of those coming by way of knockout against six losses. Joining us from Limora, California, ladies and gentlemen, introducing Jose Luis Relampago Gallegos. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. He comes in where the black trunks trim with the pink, weighing in officially at already 127 pounds. His record is perfect, 22 wins, 17 of those coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Cebu City of Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack El Capitan. Tapura. So it's our next matchup. There we see Jose Gallegos looking ahead. The first blemish to the record of Jack Tapura. Tapura making his United States debut. Was supposed to fight on the undercard of Manny Pacquiao, Adrian Broner against Hugo Patito Ruiz. But Tapura missed weight in that contest. He was pulled out of the fight. And now making his United States debut tonight. When we asked him about it, he said his nutrition wasn't well. Things just didn't work in his favor. But he feels that he will have no more issues moving forward with the featherweight weight limit. You know what? That's always a blessing for me. Why thought that connected from the outset? Always a blessing in disguise when you have to make a business move like that, business decision like that. You come back, you understand some things, educate yourself. You come back to the ring stronger and better than ever. You know, there's another Filipino fighter coming out in South Boss Dance. And as Jordan said earlier, uh, Jack DeVore is basically a right-hander converted because of his admiration for Manny. But for a lot of these guys, it works because their power hands in the front. The front hand, they get more use out of it from the jab to hook. And the hook comes from the blind side. Yeah, we've seen them lead with two big right hooks right there. Uh, oh, oh, good left. Good left to the bottom. He looks strong. He looks strong. He looks composed, boys. I was just going to say, Sean, just very composed. You know, and that's the key to being, uh, being the champion of the ring. Kevin's just composed. There's a shot to the body that found its mark for Tapor. Tapor looks very crisp in the early going. He's trained by Rodel Mayon, who is a former world champion of the Philippines, and a big straight left spray in Gallegos. And Gallegos isn't thrown with much frequency, largely in part to the straight lefts. But back comes Gallegos. Gallegos crowding Tapor. Double, double left right there, straight left and then a hook, and a, and a, and a, excuse me, a straight right and then a, a right hook. And those were two good punches that got in right there from the sky. You know, I think the core is trying to draw him in to a little bit of a firefight in on the ropes. But it's never good to let a guy man run. There it is. Gallegos, he caught Tapora and he backed him up for a brief moment. He walked into 
to that right hook right there. I heard him show him some life. He was come out a little sleepy, and now he's woke up. <laughs> well, maybe he was trying to lure Tapora in or trying to gauge the power and the speed of the Filipino. There's a big straight left, smacking right into the face of Gallegos. If you watch, a lot of these guys are under a lot of man these moves. They faint, the way they faint, where they throw punches, angles that they throw punches. Sean, like that, you've been a spark part for Manny for a long time. You know who I'm talking about. How Manny sets you up and comes from weird angles. Yeah, it's, it's always from the weird angle and it's always the punch you don't expect. And especially with it being coming from a softball stance. Uh, you just never know what, what to expect. <laughs> Coming up on the final moments of our opening stanza, Jack Tapora and Jose Luis Gallegos. This is a good first round for both guys. They are mixing it up here in San Jacinto, California. Let him up, let him up. And that's the end of the first. Jack Tapora, though, the calling card of Manny Pacquiao, the straight left. And he does so with this bang. Back to round two, Jack Tapora and Jose Luis Gallegos. Tapora looking solid in the first round, as did Gallegos. Gentlemen, what did you observe? Well, the first thing I saw, is, and, and Sean mentioned, no, uh, Tapora was look, looking sharp early on. Gallegos was playing little, little, you know, peekaboo in there with, a, with his hands held high. Wasn't throwing many punches back. But the second half of that round, he came on strong. He hit Tapora with some good straight right hands, and he made it an exciting round. Well, I tell you what, the, main, the way me and Ray get down, we don't really use the first round as a filling out round. So I think we forgot that it was supposed to be a filling out round. I think both guys got a good feel for what each other had and started to, you know, really try to take advantage when they could. For Jose Gallegos, he's 14 and 2 in Mexico, just 2 and 4 here in the United States, coming off a loss to answer Eric De Leon. When we asked him about that fight, that fight took place in March of this year. He said he had a fever the night before, but it is just in his Mexican blood to continue and go on with the fight. Now he says he's totally healthy. We'll see if Relampago, which means a flash of lightning, can, if he can find some lightning in a bottle and stop Tapora. Let me see if I can get this in real quick. Oh, big left right there. Let me see if I can get this in real quick. So, middle of the round, uh, they, they go to their corners. I look over to Gallo's corner, and the entire camp is looking over at me, smiling. He see me right here at ringside. So, six years in the game leads me to believe one of two things. Either they're not ready for this moment, or they're really comfortable. So, uh, at any rate, right now, I think they're both fighters are working really well using both hands, and both guys look strong. You know, I, like, I like Gael you know, when, he's, when he's pressuring, when he's coming forward. He's throwing with both hands in the he's body. Not, not the same on his back foot. But when he's, when he's yeah. stuck yeah. on back, laying on the ropes, he gives, he gives Tabora the chance to take over. It gives him time to read and think and, and, and do what he wants to do. Yeah, I agree with that one. Jack Tabora, one of seven children. He is the son of a tricycle driver. To make ends meet in the Philippines, he collected trash along the roads for 30 pesos a day as a child. So it just goes to show you that Tapora comes from not the easiest upbringing. Now we'll play a, a, a road in the ring. You've been through hardships like that, hardships in the ring mean absolutely nothing to you. As I said, so you see the guys coming from whether Mexico, Philippines, they fight hungry. They fight hungry. It's chopping right past that thought it's far for Gallegos, but to pour with it to exchange at close distance. A big straight left and connected on the chin of Gallegos. As we near the conclusion of the second, a right hook that found its destination for to pull followed by a straight left. The action continuing, and again, the calling card for Tapora, much like Manny Pacquiao, the straight left. And here's evidence of that as we continue on FS2. Welcome back to PBC Fight Night Prelims on FS2. Jack Tapora, who is coming off a career-long 321-day layoff. He has halted his last six opponents and 12 of his last 13, but it is evident that Gallegos is going to be no easy out. Gallegos has to be aggressive. We learned that really early in this fight. He's aggressive. He changes the way the, the whole mood in the ring is when he's aggressive going at Tempora. You know what I like, Sean? He comes out two times, you know, he finishes the round, coming forward, he begins each round. 
boxing like this. When he comes forward, he's much more effective. And I think he's got to start you know, sitting down in his punches, you know, and, and just come forward and banging that body like he's been doing. For Gallegos, trying to have sustained action and sustained activity. He has had moments, but then he gets cracked with a straight left like that. Ray, when, he's, when he's standing straight up like that, he's trying to box, that's when he's getting caught. When he sits down, his punches come forward, he's much more effective. A right hook to the body by Tapora, and Tapora, much like Marlon Tapala, varies where he's placing his punches, going to the body and also mixing it up, hitting the head of Gallegos. I'd like to see, I'd like to see Gallegos step over to his left, take that left hook, keep your right, uh, left foot outside his right foot. I'm gonna go out on the limb and say whichever fighter is gonna be aggressive throughout this fight is gonna be a fighter that wins. It seems like whoever's taking control, they really seem to take control until they take steps back. Approach in the midway mark of round three. Tapora is trying to measure Gallegos. What do you want to see out of Gallegos to try to exhibit some more offense? He's bobbing and weaving, but he's not letting his hands go. When you get close, you gotta try to touch him. Well, like I said, touch him with that jab, touch him on the hip, touch him with the shoulder. But then push at the southpaw. You keep moving to your left. Push him to his left. Touch him on the shoulder. Touch him in the hip. Then let them hands go. Yeah, I agree with that. You slip left, you slip right, and then you return shots. So he's got to start returning shots. And I think it starts with the jab. Right here, Sean. Right here. He's got to stay there. Don't back up. Even if you can hit him a few shots, keep your hands up, bobbing and weaving, and fire right back. I right, agree. You got to stay there. Well, there's a big straight left back. Gallegos. Gallegos shook his head, but we know that that is evidence that he may have gotten bust. He's been shaking his head since the very first round. So, you know, I always laugh when a guy does that, but sometimes you never know. And Tapora has a big straight left. Gallegos in trouble. You never know. Look at the power. You never know. It is that Filipino power that we are seeing out of Jack Tapora here in round number three. But Tapora showing maturity and poise by not rushing in. You don't want to rush, but at the same time, you got to let a guy know that you're not playing games. And right now, one, one of these guys got to take control after they land a shot like that. And there's a big straight left. And Jack Tapora again continues to have his way. So Tempura, he, he he lands a great uppercut, but then he's got to go forward. You see that the, the, those seconds in between is when he needs to be applying more pressure and action to the fight. And again, look at that. He was swinging for the fences. I think Tempura, in his mind, he may be close to possibly getting a stoppage rate. That's what we're seeing. He's starting to throw more power punches. Yeah, he was trying to. He was trying to. But this, look, Gallego is, 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 is very, you know, he's very determined, very durable. He, he moves right. When he does move straight back, he moves in a circle. He moves away from the power hand. So this shows me that he's got his, his wits about him. Jack Tapora stated that down the line, one of his dream matchups were to be to fight Leo Santa Cruz. And when we asked him why, he said because Leo is the king of LA and also world champion at 126 pounds. Yeah, these guys, these Filipinos, they, they marvel at being, uh, being in America and especially being in LA. They love LA. And if they could be a star anywhere, I'm sure it would be LA. And that's more than likely why he wants to take on Leo Santa Cruz become the new king of L.A. Man, look, after we, see, after we see how the fight ends, but I like the style matchup. This is how I find Leo Santa Cruz. Leo Santa Cruz isn't going to be backing up. Leo Santa Cruz is going to become the yeah. floor. And he's going to be almost as tall as him, if not taller. So, but I like the style matchup because he's a sneaky southpaw. He's, there it is. He he left in. In. Yeah, I, I would be a nice matchup. Well, who knows if that is down the line. But Jack Tapora first has to get past Jose Luis Gallegos. But so far, the resistance from Gallegos is starting to lessen. We saw him active in the first couple rounds, but now his activity level has dropped. And I always look for adjustments during the fight. Right now, I see the, the, the biggest adjustment right now is just that right there, the jab that Tempora is starting to apply to the fight. These jabs to measure Gallegos and land the, the hard left hand and the big right hook that he has. Michelle, what I'm, what I'm impressed by Tempora is that he's keeping his composure. 
He's, he's just looking like a workman-like workman -like fashion, setting up the punches, and he's not losing his composure or getting over anxious. I like the, I like what I see from him right now. Yeah, he's not really he's not push, he's not pressing anything right now. You know, he's not out of control, and, and he's still looking and trying to observe and find the right shots. And it is. Yeah, the uppercut that landed for Tapura, but Diego's is still in front of him. Throws a right hook on the temple. Now Gallego sensing that he has to show some signs of life. He's in no danger of being stopped, but... But I, I gotta say, I like that right there. Gallego, he switched to softball, threw a couple shots, and he switched back and to the underdog position, then threw some more shots. Here he is back on the road. But the thing that, that that lets me know is that he's still very much in, the, in, in this fight, and he, and he still has all of his senses. Jack Tabora has thrown some heavy leather towards Gallegos, but Gallegos remains up. Oh, Gallegos is a tough, strong, durable guy. And, you know, you've got to have a good chin and, and a good heart determination. He's just being out, you know, out man, I'm gunned right now. This guy, you know, Tabora's got too many weapons for him right now. But look, let's see what happens about fighting in the fight. Jack Tabora in control in the early going against Jose Gallegos. Don't forget our main event later on tonight on FS1. Devin Alexander will battle Ivan Redcatch in the welterweight division. Five moments of this fourth round. That's the end of the fourth. So we got Gallegos right here. One, one adjustment he's made is switching the southpaw right here. I don't know if it was on purpose or, or, or by accident, but right here at the end of the round, he switches again and goes southpaw, and he's able to land some good hard shots. And even the ones that he didn't land, they were heavy enough to land on the body and let Tempura know that he's still there. Well, Gallegos is giving a good account of himself, even though he is in winning, but he is showing that he has quite a bit of fire in his belly and is still in this matchup. Yeah, I was just gonna say, like through four rounds, this is a close fight, 3-1 maybe for Tempura, possibly 4-0. I mean, they're, they're close rounds. Close rounds, yeah. Like, yeah. I think Tempura has probably won all the rounds, but still close rounds. But this is right here, the guy who goes to. Keep moving to your left, pushing him to his left, and start deep with that left hand. Touch him on the shoulder, on the hip, with the left hook, the jab, and then shoot the right hand. Don't shoot, don't shoot that right hand from too far out. And Ray, that makes complete sense. I think the thing we have to ask ourselves is, is he in shape to do it? He's, he's doing it, and then he stops. Why he stop? Why, right there, he pulled back, fresh up. He put him to the left hook, he pulled back. Why? Stay right there, keep firing. Back him up. Fight. Don't, don't worry, become successful against Southpaw. You got to back the Southpaw up. And the, and, and the fight scheduled for 10. Maybe that, that could be playing through his mind right now, not too much too soon. I mean, we really don't know. But we know he's successful when he puts, puts the pressure on Tempura and he, and he leads first. But also has to play the mindset as we are just over a minute gone in the fifth round. Gallegos cannot give up too much of these early rounds. No, and once you do that, you know, of course, you got to play catch the ball that long. Then you got to take chances. That's how you can step up. There's a nice left hook to the body by Gallegos. This has been the most impressive round thus far out of the native Chicago and that now lives here in California. And right here, you got it. You have to turn off. I wish I could scream, turn off of the road because you don't need to be there. You can fight. So fight. No, don't allow yourself to get drawn back to the road and take shots. This is kills me, Sean. This guy standing with their hands up. Why not keep your hands in position to punch and move your head? And move your head. head. And even at that, don't give up the round. You're giving them rounds when you do that. Well, the, the head of Gallegos, he is very much on the line, which means that Gallegos' head is stationary, and that is an easy target, especially for a softball, to land his power punch straight left. Yeah. Gallegos threw a punch, he missed it, and he stepped straight back and dropped it. Why not? He missed the punch, threw the other, uh, the, the, the other hand and stepped to the side. He's got there it is, there, there it is, right yeah. there. Keep, keep staying there and keep digging to the box. Don't yeah. back up. The action is intensifying between Jack Tapora and Jose Gallegos as we have 30 seconds left here in the fifth. And they are swinging from the fences. Tapora backing up Gallegos. Gallegos bobbing and weaving. Gallegos got to fire back. Can't allow that to happen. He's got to fire back. He was backing up, and he 
was absorbing some punches by Tempura. And yes, you give up a round when you do that. You back to the ropes, you allow Tempura to get off, you know, 10 to 15 shots, you give up the round. We are halfway on big right hand that connected by Gangos, his best punch of the fight. We are Back here to Southern California as we bring in our unofficial score, Marcos Vegas. Marcos, how do you see the fight thus far? Yeah, Ray, so far I have it 50 to 45. Now, that last round was a close round, and I felt that Tepora won it due to his power punches. A lot of the earlier rounds were very close as well, but I think overall, when he gets a little bit behind, Tepora does. He's able to turn it back on in the last frame of the round and really score with power punches. Gentlemen, do you agree with Marcos' scorecard? It's, yeah. it's hard to not yeah. agree with the 5-0 so far. Um, and like Marcos said, when he gets behind in the score, it seems like he always seems to, to manage to pick up the pressure and land the, the harder shots. But like you said, Sean, they're close rounds. I agree with Marcos' uh, scoring, but they're close rounds. Well, Gallegos was having his best round, but then in the last 30 seconds, Toporo backed him up and then unloaded combinations in the corner in which Gallegos did not fire back. Ray, when I see Gallegos, he's coming on, he's doing good, he's landing some good punches, he backs up. To me, he's fighting like an opponent. Instead of looking like a guy who's trying to win, he's fighting not to lose. Well, just to go ahead and show you guys, Tapora landed more punches in the fifth than Gallegos did in the previous two rounds combined. My goodness, very thanks to Justin, our researcher, doing an excellent job. My goodness, as Tapora, that just goes to show you his work rate. The work rate is high for, for Tapora. The work rate's decent for both guys, but Tapora is able to land a good jab, and he's able to, to set up that big straight left in the right hook. Gallegos doesn't seem to be fading, but he needs to have more sustained pressure. Easier said than done, but he's capable of it. Yeah, but you just said it. Easier said than that, but you gotta try it. You gotta keep coming forward. Let your hands go. That's what I'm talking about. Fighting not to, not to lose instead of fighting to win. Hey, you come forward, you bang both hands. You got to back him up. You cannot beat a southpaw without backing him up. And, and when you talk about boxing experience, it's, there's a whole lot to take into account. You gotta take into account managing each round, managing through 10 rounds, knowing when to turn it on, when to turn it off, when to apply pressure, when to back up, how to move around the ring, and it seems like Gallegos just doesn't have every component that's that's needed to win rounds against Tempora. No, he does have to experience for that, yeah, shot. And See, a big straight left by Tempora again. As Tapora picking his spots, Gallegos is allowing him to oh, do so on a right hook oh. to the body that smashed into the rib cage of Gallegos. That's up top. 30 seconds left. Ray, that's up top. If you stand in front of the guy with your hands up, you become a punching back. You got to come forward. You can't just stand there. Move your head. You stand there becoming that punching back. An experience right there. He took two steps forward. He moved his head, but then didn't throw any shots. It's, it's, it's like it all has to make sense and, and flow together. And, and Gaios just doesn't have it. Well, Tapora is being very calculated and demonstrating very good defense as well, evading the punches of Gallegos as round six draws to a close. There is Rodel Mayol, the former world champion in the corner, as we will go in and listen to what Jose Gallegos' corner is telling him. Yeah. Put more pressure. Get the pressure going and keep bobbing and weaving. And you gotta throw punches too. And the jabs, okay? Don't don't stay there. Don't be stagnant. Let's go. And I and it. It. very much thanks to Felix De Jesus, our translator. Do you agree with what they were telling him? It's so the, the corner's telling him to apply pressure, like Ray is saying, don't just stand there, move and apply pressure, which is what we've been saying the whole the whole night. But not only got you you have to train your fighter in prepara in preparation to do what's needed to win. And it seems like they didn't do that. It seems, no, seems like he doesn't have what it takes to win. No, Shadow not give him instruction on how to combat the, the soft spot stance. Done, we gotta apply pressure. But what do you have to do? We apply pressure, left the right hand, go to the body, left hook to the to the, to the liver. They're not telling him any of that. 
Well, let's also look, guys, as we are into round number seven. Ray Flores alongside the Hall of Famer Ray Mancini, the champ Sean Porter, Marcos Vegas, and Jordan Hardy. Don't forget our main event later tonight on FS1. Devin Alexander will encounter Ivan Redcatch, a matchup in the welterweight division. But right now, we are here at 126, the featherweight division. Jack Tapora looking very solid, not wasting much energy, and continues to pepper Gallegos with that straight left hand. Gallegos doesn't do anything. He's standing in front of him, waiting to get sharpshooting. No, and that's what uh, Tapora's doing. He's sharpshooting him. Gallegos is waiting for that instead of getting out first. There's a sledgehammer on the left that crashed right into the face of Gallegos. Gallegos getting backed up now. Tapora starting to open up his offense. Gallegos has got to get his back off the ropes. You got to get off the ropes. You got to turn him, get back to the center of the ring, and try to take control of the fight. Tempura, on the other hand, let's talk about the, the sharp shooting that he's doing right now. He's picking his punches, the jab, uppercuts, straight lefts. He's doing all the right things. And the defense is impressive out of Tempura. Even though Gallegos isn't throwing a ton of punches, just 277 thus far that he has thrown. It's, but very good head movement out of Tempura. Yes, and body movements, good, good face. Yes. And you yes. see that just one little subtle move, and then he's right out of the way from everything. And that's what it takes. It's just. The boxing is a game of inches. And inches and angles. And inches, inches and angles, angles baby. <laughs> you got it. Oh! Big straight left that connected by Tapora. That was right after he got out of the way of a jab attempt by Gallegos. It's those little nuances, guys. The centimeters, the inches, those little slight feints, and the athleticism by Tapora, I think, helps him out exponentially when it comes to defensively. Yeah, I mean, you can see you know, Tapora slipping and sliding there. He's making a miss just enough. Not a lot, just enough, and he's countering him. He's in position to counter. And Tempura has gotten better as his fight has oh. continued on, which is a good sign of, of a fighter trying to make a move to a championship title. It, he's getting better throughout the fight. It almost seems like Tempura is seeing things in slow motion and is able to get out of the See, right here, the only thing we can say is keep going. Gallegos is not in shape, and he's not equipped to, to keep going and, and take control of this fight. Jack Tempura looked over at his corner and now straight left. Tapora continues to hammer away upon Jose Gallegos as he's in total control here. Instead, it's Roy Jones Jr. and Ivan Redcatch with his trainer, Sugar Shane Mosley. They are both in attendance and ready to go. Our main event on FS1 later tonight. But thus far, round number eight, Jack Tapora and Jose Gallegos continue with the action. It has been all Jack Tapora. You know, you know, the funny thing, Tapora says that he wants to fight Leo Santa Cruz. And from this, from what I'm seeing tonight, that would be an interesting, interesting matchup. Of course, Leo Santa Cruz would be more active than Guy Oaks would be. But, uh, but Jack uh, Tapora, I like the style. It would be an interesting uh, fight of styles. Well, Sean, it is evident that Tapora can mix it up in a quote-unquote firefight, but then also he can slow it down in just box and use his ring generalship to gain the advantage. You know what? He's in the ring with a guy that's allowing him to do that. Uh, it, moving forward, because it, it's pretty plain to see he's going to win this fight. Moving forward, Leo Santa Cruz will not give you that kind of no, space. No, Leo no, Santa Cruz. No, hey, go ahead, go ahead. Brad. No, just say no, no. No, you're no, right. He's not going to do it. Leo Santa Cruz comes to throw punches and a big power punch himself. But it'd be an interesting style, uh, it, it, interesting matchup of styles. As we are coming up on the halfway mark of round eight. Yeah, Leo just doesn't give you that, that space and that opportunity to be as uh, poised and, and, and comfortable as Tempura is right now. Leo's all action all the time. But so far, Jack Tempura is making his U.S. debut, and thus far, it has been. Oh. And a big right that connected by Gallegos. Tempura took, and he's looking at him. He's literally putting his chest on him and looking at him and saying, is that all you got? Yeah, I don't like guys, you know, you're winning the fight. Just, you don't need to counter all like that. Win the fight. No, show respect to the fighter. He's still trying. Tapora literally took the punch, put his head in the chest of Gallegos, and darted and looked right in his eyes. 
but then he comes back with a couple left hands. And here's the thing, at this point in the fight, and you know you, you're in control and you're winning, work on some things. That's get right. better at some things. Get better on your defense. That's right. Get, start trying to see what this guy is doing. Don't put yourself in the line of fire to be hit. Hey, Ray, Tabor is trying to knock him out. He can't. Gaiuki's got a heck of a chin, and he's determined. Oh! There's a big oh! right hand, another one, two oh! big right hands. But Tabor, again, he connects with a very big left hand, followed by a right That's hook. Gaiuki says, come on, bring it. Well, now we're seeing the ferocity, and we're seeing the work right out of Gaiuki's. The action heating up as we head towards the ninth. Gallegos showing some signs. Look at this, that big right hand. Big right hand right there. Tempur gives it to him again, and he, and he takes it. Um, and then Tempur comes right back, and that, that's been the, 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 the tell of the tape the whole night is uh, Gallegos will take something, and then Tempur will take it right back. And that's, that's how the fight's gone this whole night. I love this, I love this right here. Right here, keep throwing, keep throwing punches. Playing around, clowning around, then he gets caught with a couple more. There it is. Punch him again. That's it, man. You can't look. That's how you get. That's yeah. how you get dropped. And, and like I said, at this point in the fight, you're comfortable, but don't get too comfortable. That's right. Work don't on get some careless. things. Get better. Don't. Uh, it's okay to be comfortable. Don't get careless. Yeah. Yeah. Get better. I'd rather you see get better instead of showing the crowd that you're in control and you're winning and putting your hands down, smiling, things like that. And, and, you know, it's it's good for TV. It's good for. But is it good for your career? Right. Is it going to help you in the next fight? Now that gets Leo Santa Cruz. No. <laughs> no. Well, Jack Tapora, his sixth fight knockout streak is in peril as Gallegos has taken several big punches from him and continues to advance forward. He's been trying to knock him out all night, Ray. I mean, Tapora uh, has been trying to knock Gallegos out. But I think at this point, you know, he realizes, you know, look, he hasn't done it. He realizes he's got a guy in front of him got a hell of a chin and is very determined. So at this point, maybe you just beat him the easiest way. All right, and so here, I'm going to play devil's advocate real quick. And it looks like Gallegos may have been saving himself for the end of this fight. And he's starting to try to come on and not take any steps back. It is. Look, it's much more aggressive, right? You're right, Sean. Much more aggressive so far. Yeah, so far. 50 seconds have ticked off the but clock. But remember, this night. is where he's been all night. So guess what? He got comfortable getting back, back where he's used to being instead of following the game plan of turning it up in the, in the late rounds, 9 and 10, and taking control and winning the fight. Eddie Hernandez warns Tapora about holding and pushing the head down as you take a look at total punches landed for Gallegos. He hasn't landed more than 11 punches in any round. Tapora's best round was 28 punches connected in round number three. He's averaging 20 punches per round that he connects on. Uh, Tapora's corner's got to tell him this. Right now, a fighter, uh, Gallegos is more dangerous to you than ever because right now is the time where he's going to get reckless, take some, take some chances, lead with his head, uh, get really unorthodox and, and step with the wrong foot. All that kind of stuff is about to start to happen. And Tempura's got to do this. He's got to stay in control and continue to stay Sean, focused. Sean, I love guy who his bravado. He's standing there getting him shut and saying, come on, bring it on. God, I love that about this kid. He's got more, like I said, for the jump. He's shown a lot of hard determination so far. He's just didn't get the firepower to match Tempura, but many matches him in every other category. Yeah. Under 60 seconds remaining here in the ninth round. Jack Tapora had been coming in and had been demolishing his opponents. He has the advantage against Gallegos, but it has not been easy. El Capitan, he's been the captain all night. He's been driving the ship, but Gallegos is trying to take him into those deep waters. We'll see if he can do so. Here we go. I like this. Hands are down. All right. But you, you can fix that. But now you're using your feet. Now you're using your range and your distance. And you get back to being focused and sharp instead of allowing the fight to just c carry, continue on the way that it is. No, shot of my guys with the hands down with the out of range. That's it. Then he picks him up when he comes closer. All right. And keep boxing. Keep boxing if you're, if you're jacked in for it. Keep picking your punches. And, and, and like I said before, trying to get better. Now's the time to improve. Now's the time to finish the fight like a champion. Well, Tapora just stuck the jab right in the face of Gallegos as we have one more round remaining. And we'll see if Gallegos can turn the corner as we listen into his corner. Now he's running. Now he's running. 
We got one more round here to get it done. Right, huh? Okay. Okay. And then hook. Okay. Okay. If you if you're in front of him, you gotta start throwing, but not too tight. Okay. Keep nice and tight. Okay. Take your breath. Good. 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 Last round, okay? There is the corner check to Boron. As there's Rodon Mayol in his corner. And now, through nine rounds, we'll turn it over to our unofficial score, Marcos Villegas. How do you have the fight thus far? So, Carey, I have it 90 to 81. Jack Tapora is all in control of this fight. He's just more active, and it's been a fight where his volume is really winning him these rounds. Uh, Gallegos will go in spurts. He'll start doing well, and then he stops his attack. He won't throw anymore, and allows Tapora to come back in and start landing his power punches. But through nine rounds, I have it 90 to 81. Thank you very much, Marcos and gentlemen. You saw them both exchange pleasantries, hugging one another prior to the start of the final round. Let him go, let him go. I love that sportsmanship, I really do. I don't know if I'd be hugging him at this, at this point. After the fight, because you start hugging me, I'm going to rip a shot off on your chin. But I do appreciate the sportsmanship. Two, two gladiators, show respect for each other. Love that. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's Sometimes it's hard being the champion, isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, sometimes it's hard being the champion. Oh, it's hard being you know, Gallego, Gallego's corner. They get up on the ropes, on the on the apron, and they look at me, and they're looking at me with this face like, I don't know. What do you think? Like looking at me for the answer. I can't give you the answer right now. You got to apply pressure, and you got to stay in in, in Tempora's face. And if you want to try to get the get a win, it's got to be a knockout. Gallego says, coming forward, realizing that he is in trouble of losing. Yet another matchup for Tapora. He seems to be resigned to the fact that his six-fight knockout streak is probably going to come to an end because Gallegos has taken quite a bit of heavy shots in this matchup. You know, man, that's the point. You know, we all get caught by knockouts. That's what I say. When it happens, it happens. You keep throwing punches, you catch a guy, it happens. But in this case, at this point, you just beat him the easiest way. And that's what he's doing right now. A lot of heart from Gallegos, though. You gotta, you gotta appreciate that. Love it, gotta love he's still it. taking a fight to him, and he, and, he's, and he kept the fight interesting. Oh, There's a oh, nice right easy. uppercut by Tapora, seeming look to back up Gallegos. I but love Gallegos it. says, come on, let's do that. this. Machismo, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> the bravado, the orgullo, the honor well, here, here's of Gallegos on about. full display. At this point, you gotta, gotta stay within yourself. Don't get wild because the other guy is getting is getting crazy. Stay under control, stay poised, and finish the fight the right way. For Jack Tapora, Ray, what have we learned? What have you been able to see out of Tapora? I, I love quick hands, as we just saw right there. You know, he's a sharpshooter, man. And he's got good defense. He moves his head. He leads in and out of way of punches. I'd like to see him fight. Uh, Leo Santa Cruz. It'd be a hell of a fight. Believe me, I'm not saying he, Leo Santa Cruz is my favorite fighter, one of my favorite fighters, but I'd like to see that matchup. That'd be a hell of a fight. I don't know how far away he is from that fight, but I do agree with Ray. I think that that would be a really good fight. He's, he, good movement at the end of this fight, and uh, he, he did a good job tonight. Tempura. Jack oh, Tempura mixing it up at the end of this matchup against Jose Gallegos. Oh, and Gallegos oh, through oh, one oh. for the run. Way to end the fight. Wow, they both embrace with one another. Hard fought matchup between Jack Tapora, who is making his United States debut and will likely be a successful one. He looked terrific here in this matchup. Jack Tapora, the featherweight out of the Philippines, just 24 years of age. He's been a pro for over seven years and finally here in the United States. And he is letting the featherweight division know that the Filipino is here and ready to make an impact. With there is Jack Tapora coming and giving a fist bump to the Hall of Famer, Ray Mancini. Wanted to come and get some positive vibes from you, Ray, and here's how it all played out. Pound it, man, pound it. Oh, he did some pounding on Gaios. I love this kid, man. I love the energy he showed. I love early on he went downstairs. Boom, bit, loved the body shots. This kid's a complete package, man. You know what, through the night, he picked, it seemed like he was picking his shots very, very carefully, and he knew the right shots to throw. Uh, a lot of head and body throughout the night. 
uh, for t- from Tapora. And he takes a couple shots. Yeah, shot. yeah, he took a couple shots through the night. I mean, let's let's not fake the funk here. G- Gallegos was definitely in the fight. Um, at least half the fight. You know, he always seemed to find a way to come back at some points throughout the fight. Tenth round, I think, was the most interesting and, and fun one to watch. Yeah. And, and definitely at the end here, look at the pullback. <laughs> look at that. Oh, almost broke his back doing that. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's take a look at the numbers with punch stats in this matchup. The total punches, 202 punches landed, a 29% connect percentage for Jack Tapora. And let's take a look at the power evident out of the Filipino from, as he looked tremendous, landing power punches at a 44% connect percentage. And now to see how he has the fight rendered with his verdict is our own Marcos Villegas. Yeah, Ray, I have it 100 to 90, all the rounds uh, going to uh, Jack Tapora. I I know there's a few uh, close rounds uh, early on and I felt just overall when I looked at those close rounds, I thought to myself, well, who landed the most damaging punches? The punches uh, that were the cleanest? And, and, you know, who did the most to win that round? And, and each time I asked myself that question, I gave the rounds to Tapora because I, I felt that uh, he went ahead and did that over the course of these 10 rounds. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone the distance, we go to the scorecards. All three judges seem about identical, 99 to 91 for your winner. By unanimous decision, and still undefeated, Jack El Capitan Tapura. So Jack Tapura makes his United States debut a successful one improving his record to 23 and 0 and the victorious filipino sensation is standing by with jordan hardy here we go, here we go and jack's saying congratulations to his opponent real quick jack we're going to take you back over here congratulations great fight and you will translate for us this was your first fight in the united states do you feel like you showed fans what you're really capable of Una mo rong laba dito dito sa United States of America. Ang pakiramdam mo ba na ipakita mo sa iyong mga tigahanga kung ano talaga yung abilidad ni Jack Tipora? Uh, oo kasi first time ko maglaban dito sa US tapos maraming malalaking tao. So lalo na mga champion, uh, idol Sean Porter and my promoter Sean Gibbons, uh, Brendan Gibbons. And to my wife, Dina Tipura, and my Kuya Serge, and Coach Lucas, and Coach Rodin Mayol, Coach Kuya Ernel, the Coach Stanley, and all everything. And Sir Manny and God, thank you. Uh, he said that this is his first time, all right? And he is uh, pleased with his performance in spite of the pressures that there are so many uh, big time boxers, including. Uh, champion Sean Porter watching and he is very thankful for the opportunity given to him by Sean Gibbons, his son Brendan and uh, Senator Manny Pacquiao for bringing him over and uh, he is thanking his wife Dina Tipora uh, who's been with uh, him through thick and thin and all the team members and the coaches that helped him and all the officials that helped him uh, perform this way. And. This, was this fight, was your opponent a lot, a lot tougher than you expected him to be? You know, you guys went the distance. Were you, were you prepared for that? Masyado ba raong matibay ang kalaban at handa ka daw ba talaga na tumagal ang laban ng sampung round o hindi mo ini-expect yun? Ako, John, gihunahon na nga maabot gimi ground. Huwag ko mag-hunahon nag-knockout kay. Uh, I respect my opponent because he's a tough and a Closing. champ, and that's why I give my best in the 10 rounds. Yeah, he wasn't. He said he never looked for the knockout because he respects his opponent. Uh, he is a champion, a true champion, and he is very strong. And uh, he took a lot of punches, but he's very strong and he trained hard.